that soldiers could have. Actually, it was invented by Dr. Johann Gottlieb Sigurds, who was a German surgeon working in the army of Simon Bolivar. That was the fellow here. This guy invented that in 1824. He was working in the army of Simon Bolivar in Venezuela. Venezuela at that time was uh, fighting for its independence against the Spanish Empire. Now, what happened at that time when we didn't have any water filtration or pasteurization or any kind of treatment of the, of the water, uh, what happened is that soldiers, when they drank from a river, they spent a really bad time two days later. So the good old Dr. Sigurd invented this Amargo Aromatico, it was called at the time, to uh, calm down the, the funky Tummies of the uh, of the uh, soldiers and sailors of uh, Venezuela, ports of Venezuela. Now, what happened when soldiers and sailors discover a product that is actually work? You can still use these diluted in water to be uh, to, to actually cure your stomach illnesses that you can have after a bumpy night going out, for example. Now, what happened when when the sailors? Uh, discovered that this is a product that, that works, it happens that they start carrying in their pockets. And the sailors do not stay in one single place. They move from one port to the other. So from Venezuela in the Southern Caribbean, they started to make this product acknowledgeable well known in the rest of the Caribbean. Uh, they, didn't, they didn't take a long time to realize that it was also delicious to make punches and some mixed drinks. And what do we have at the north of the Caribbean? The USA. The USA in the 19th century was living an explosion of the cocktail culture. Uh, we tend to think that cocktails are a pretty modern thing, but actually it's a culture and a wave that actually started in at the beginning of the 19th century. So that's why at the end of the 19th century, you get cocktails so iconic as the Manhattan cocktail of the pink gin, where the recipe already calls for Angostura aromatic bitters. Two of the most iconic cocktails in history call <coughs> specifically for Angostura aromatic bitters. But let's go even before the first cocktail ever created. Does anybody of you know which one was the first cocktail ever created? Today we call it old fashion. fashion. Who said that? Who said that stronger than that? That's for you. Old fashioned, that's it. And somebody knows who, what are the ingredients of an old fashioned? It's a, it's a whiskey. Yeah. Mustura beaches. Yeah. Uh, orange peel and some sugar. Orange fruit and some sugar. Okay, let's go to the basics. We didn't have fruits at the moment. The original recipe of an old fashioned is spirits, whiskey, as you said, spirits, sugar, water, and bitters. Now, the water, sometimes you use it to just to dilute your sugar. But what it's quintessential in the old fashioned, it's the word bitters. First, that's for you, you man. Uh, first cocktail in history already calls for bitters. Now it's very important to note here that Angostura bitters is the first bitter ever created. So when we got first cocktail ever created calls for bitters and first bitter in history is Angostura, we understand that Angostura was a quintessential pillar of the cocktail culture and of the creation of born and raised of cocktail culture, not only in the US but worldwide. Now, in 1863, uh, Angostura is presented in the Great Exhibition of London, which means that Angostura starts to be 
well known, not only in the Caribbean, in the US, but everywhere in the world. And it's from there that it's become the most global product of the bar. And we'll see afterwards why. Uh, in 1875, the Secrets family moved from Venezuela to Trinidad and Tobago. This is very important. From now on, Angostura will always be known as a product of Trinidad and Tobago. But why is also important? Because before, Venezuela was an isolated, freshly independent country. The Trinidad and Tobago was part of the British Empire. And when you, your production distribution is in the British Empire, it's inside the, the British Empire, you are open to a massive market of hundreds and hundreds of, of territories that you can easily reach. And that's one of the other cl uh, clues of success, keys of success of Angusura Aromatic Peter. Then you get some uh, very boring uh, uh, years where Angusura are the official purveyor of several monarchies in Europe, like the monarchy of Prussia, Spain, the UK, and lately, in 1955, the actual queen of, of uh, the UK, the Queen Elizabeth II. Now, Queen Elizabeth II is well known for two things. First of all, she is aged like rum. She, uh, she's not young. And the second thing is like she drinks three cocktails a day. Three cocktails a day. I think it's one of the secrets to, to stay, stay young so, so long time. Uh, well, their three, her three cocktails a day are done with the official purveyor, Angostura Aromatic Beats. In 1949, Angostura start distilling rum. And that's what we're going to try later on. You just open the mind and don't think that Angostura is only the bitters, but also the whole universe of rum. Now, why rum? Because actually, the base spirit for Angostura aromatic bitters has always, always been rum. So, when we had a little bit of, uh, you know, pocket money and we could buy a distillery, we decided to, instead of buying the rum and do the infusion, let's distill our own, our own rum and make good premium quality rum. Now, Angostura aromatic bitters. What maybe some of you don't know is that what is inside this bottle, it's a totally secret recipe. And when I'm, when I'm talking about a secret recipe, I mean that there is only five people in the world that knows what's inside here. I'm not one of them, so don't try to ask me. Uh, I'm very happy to not be one of them. I'm sure my life will be in danger. Uh, Five people in the world, these five people cannot be in the same building, cannot be in the same plane, cannot eat in the same restaurant or, or sleep in the same hotel, <laughs> because if a natural catastrophe was going to happen, the recipe will be lost forever and nobody wants that, right? Now, but how do we keep really the secret? Because it's really easy to have only five people, but there's a lot of production involved in one bitter. Now, what do we do? Instead of sending, uh, shipping all the ingredients from every corner of the world, we pick them, all the, every botanical that's in, in Angostura meters. Uh, instead of shipping them directly to Trinidad, because that will clue you where the ingredients come from, and you can actually know a little bit. If this comes from Madagascar, maybe it's vanilla, that's inside. If this comes from Sri Lanka, maybe it's cinnamon, that's inside. You can kind of track a little bit. So what we do with the botanicals is we send them straight to England. And then in England, they are all packed anonymously and shipped to Trinidad in just one single container. But there is even a second barrier to keep the secret. Angostura Limited, Angostura Distillers, uh, has a long time contract with the authorities of Trinidad and Tobago, uh, according to which they cannot inspect any container going to the to the distillery. That means the container just go through customs, go through customs, and nobody opens that containers. You might think that that's enough, but we don't think so. We think that we need a third barrier of privacy for the secrecy of the Angostura beers. And that comes with the secret room, the secret beers room. Now the secret beers room is a room uh, built in two stages. 
this is inside the distillery. Uh, the ground floor, everybody can get in, every worker or visitor can get in. But where we cannot get in, it's not even 10 meters close to the door that brings us to the first floor. The first floor, only one of the five people that knows the recipe can exit and get inside. So when the botanicals arrive to the distillery, they come straight to the first floor. No worker can open the container, just one of the five people that know the recipe. Now they, they open the container with the botanicals, they create the recipe, they concoct the recipe of Angostura beers to in a total anonymous way, just on the, on the first floor, nobody sees them. And then, through a big funnel that connects the first floor to the ground floor, they drop all the ingredients. But, inside the funnel, you get a gigantic grinder. So what the worker receive in the ground floor is just a powder. You cannot actually differentiate this is anise, this is ginger, this is orange, this is vanilla, this is cinnamon, this is whatever all the ingredients could be inside. You cannot know the proportions or even the ingredients inside. It smells like Angostura bitters, but you cannot see what the ingredients are. So once the ingredients are in this container, they are going to be infused. And we infused it in neutral sugarcane spirit, which is mostly rum. But it's a rum at 96 degrees, 96 ABV, degrees of alcohol, that's what I mean. And we are going to infuse them by a method called percolation. Now, percolation, uh, does everybody know how um, espresso machine works? Yeah. You put the coffee inside the percolator, put it in an espresso machine, and then water runs through the coffee at a very high pressure. Instead of making the coffee infused in the water, you run the water through the coffee. That's exactly what we do, but instead of water, it's rum. Now, into a giant percolator, the alcohol drops, drop by drop goes through the botanicals for 24 hours until we get a red colored, reddish colored uh, rum infused with all the botanicals of Angostura beers. That is the raw Angostura beers. Then what we're gonna do is just dilute it until it's uh, final uh, degree of alcohol, 44.7, and just add a little bit of sugar and coloring to keep the consistency. And just uh, rest it in stainless steel. Uh, yeah, this giant stainless steel versatile we can use it with every other spirit you can use it with gin you can use it with whiskey brandy rum etc 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 that's why it's <coughs> so versatile it's not just reduced to one category but it can touch every category of drinks and as we're going to see food now some of the um, some of the characteristic it's sodium and gluten free just uh, in case you get uh, customers that are concerned about that. It is kosher and it's totally vegan. And it's virtually non-alcoholic. And what I mean virtually non-alcoholic, it's not the product itself, it's the way of using it. The product itself has alcohol. You drink a bottle of Angostura bitter, you're gonna be drunk. But since we use it so drop by drop, the final product doesn't add alcohol to the cocktail. That means that you can have a non-alcoholic cocktail with Angostura beers, and the people, the customer, can drink 
10, 15 of those, and he can still driving at the end of the night. He can still <coughs> doing whatever he wants without being under the influence. That's why we say it's virtually non alcoholic. You also can use it for very easy non alcoholic drinks like the lemon lime and bitters. Lemon lime and bitters, uh, in some markets, it is already can, but you can make it by yourself. It's super easy. Lemon and lime soda, that means Sprite or 7 Up. You top of a, a, a glass with ice cubes and lemon lime and soda, and then you just top with Angostura bitters. It is delicious, and that is important <coughs> as well with Angostura bitters. Not only with alcoholic cocktails, not only with no alcoholic cocktails, but it can change totally the aromatic palate of sodas. I got a friend that doesn't drink alcohol. Each time we go to a bar, he asks for a Coke. I said, come on, I mean, why are you always having your Coke or ginger ale or whatever? Just pimp it up a little bit with an uh, sort of beer. Yeah, but it has alcohol, I need to drive. No, come on, you can, you can drink 20 Cokes with Angostura beers, it will be, you, you can continue driving. And so just the soda with Angostura beers will work, will make a totally different product than, than just your regular ginger ale, your, your regular Coke soda, cola. Now, fun facts about, uh, uh, about Angostura beers. You have noticed the oversized, oversized label. Have you had already a customer that asks you why the label is like that? It will happen eventually. Now, you seen, you've seen the, the label, maybe yourself has asked why. There are three stories about, about this. Three stories, two super practical, one that I really like to, to tell. Now the first one is that uh, at, the, at the moment where, where we did the label, we didn't have, we haven't perfected the uh, tincture of the glass bottle. So we need to, this label to protect from sunlight, the product, so it's not going to spoil. Second one is when you use a servitor, sometimes there is a drop that stays here, and so that serves as a receptacle so your bottle doesn't end up totally red at the end of the ship. And then you have the third story, which is the one I really like to, to, to tell, a bartender especially. Uh, Dr. Siegert left the, uh, the production of Angus Rebeters to his three sons, three children, yeah. But there were only really two that were taken care of the business, Carlos and Alfredo. Now, Carlos and Alfredo uh, wanted to present Angostura Aromatic Beers to a global competition of products in a, in a Great London exhibition. Uh, one of them was a genius of the chemistry, the other one was a genius in marketing. But they didn't spoke too much, as you know. So they said, you, the genius of chemistry, you put the recipe inside the bottle, and I, the genius of marketing, I will do a label so we can send this bottle to the competition. And two weeks later, they just met. And they realized that since they didn't communicate, the bottle was too small for the label, or the label was too big for the bottle. <laughs> but they didn't have time to correct this. So they send it to the competition. And did you know what happened in the competition? They won. They didn't win. They didn't win, but a judge told them, you guys should keep this label because this is brilliant marketing, brilliant labeling, and everybody is going to remember this bottle just because the label is oversized. And that happens. I'm sure you got customers that say, What's that bottle over there? I know that bottle over there, even if they don't know what's inside, they recognize the bottle of Fangos to Repeaters behind the bar. Even when you see a film, films, and you see that behind the bar, sometimes people don't know what is it, but everybody has in mind this bottle with this, with this oversized label. I like to tell this story as well because it has a really, really constructive um, teaching. And it's like competitions, even cocktail competitions. When you are competing into a cocktail competition, you are not competing against the other contestants, you are competing mainly against yourself. And the most important into a cocktail competition is give the best of you and end your competition feeling that you've done the best that you can and that you've been the best 
version of you. You will know later why I'm talking about this. So, uh, very quick, you can use as well Angus Rubiers for food, even it's uh, for uh, whether it is for marinate uh, uh, meats or to make some sauces. Uh, Angusura into the pancake mix, for example, or pastries. Uh, ice cream with ice with vanilla and chocolate ice cream works just perfectly. The creaminess of the ice cream just step down a bit the bitterness and enhances all the flavors of spices and the botanical aromas. Another thing you just really need to be careful because it stains. It stains a lot. The shirt, but also the wood. If you are working at the bar and a drop uh, of Angostura bitters goes into the wood, it's, it's not a big deal if you washed it away, right away, but if it dries, it will stay there forever. Like a little kiss from Angostura to the eternity. <laughs> so you got over there Jimmy Boudreau, owner of the Cannon Bar in Seattle, who decided that he didn't want any more stained bar. And how do you do that? Well, you buy 36 cases of Angostura bitters, you empty everything into a bucket, you take a brush, and you paint everything on your bar with Angostura bitters. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they did. So every single centimeter square, every single inch of wood in his bar, whether it's the floor, the furniture, or the bar, it's covered in Angostura bitters. Now you can imagine the, the, the aroma when you get inside this bar. It's just amazing. And let's talk uh, about